Tonight, Sharks players find out their fate in the long-running drama over drugs in sport. ISIS militants post a horrifying video claiming it's the execution of an American journalist. Haunted by her marriage to James Packer, a surprise admission as Jodie Mears is sentenced for drink driving. Sydney garbage collections cancelled in a truck safety scare. And just taking a break, the gorgeous baby seal resting up on the northern beaches. This is Nine News with Peter Overton. Good evening. It was called the blackest day in Australian sport. The bombshell revelation that our favourite games were rife with doping. Today, a full year and a half later, show cause notices have been handed to 17 past and present Cronulla Sharks players. But now, accusations that the whole thing was a political stunt. For 18 months, the stench of performance enhancing drugs has followed these players. Sorry, guys. And today... Gally, Gally, accept the ban. A steely silence, moments after being formally told by Asada they could be rubbed out for doping offences. Did they give you the, the ban or not? The talking was left to their club. In a statement, the Sharks confirmed Paul Gallen, Wade Graham, John Morris, Anthony Tupo and Nathan Gardner had received show cause notices. The first step towards a possible ban. The club also revealed a deal was on the table. Players have been offered a proposal regarding a possible suspension which they need to consider before the weekend. There are reports the offer is a one-year ban backdated to November 2013 which would leave them free to play next season. And that could be the sum result of that infamous press conference. The findings are shocking and they'll disgust Australian sports fans. Every code, grim-faced, sport caught up with organised crime, match-fixing and drugs. To the extent that that was the blackest day in Australia's sport, in hindsight I would say the manner of the announcement was the blackest thing that was done to Australian sport. And the former world anti-doping boss said it was unprecedented, announcing a crisis before any inquiry. And then Asada was asked to go out and get some evidence. So the problem was explained to the world, the evidence had not been collected, they had to start. His conclusion, damning. It had nothing to do with sport. I can only put that announcement down looking back on it as being nothing more than a political stunt. One of the main players on that day is still sticking to his guns. The things I said on that day uh, were accurate. But his partner at the podium preferred to hide behind this press release. Senator Lundy will not be making any public statement as it's not appropriate to comment on matters before the court. Damien Ryan, Nine News. Let's go to Rugby League reporter Danny Widler. Danny, have all the players been offered the same deal? Well, Pete, there's been a lot of speculation that the big fish, Paul Gallen, uh, wouldn't be offered the same deal, but in fact he has been. He will also miss only the same short period of time if he does prove, if he does plead guilty. Now that's the big problem for Paul Gallen. He's a man of pride and he doesn't believe that he has done anything wrong, so it'd be very hard to plead guilty uh, to a, appease Asada. Asada though, they claim they've got plenty of evidence. Uh, in fact, pages of pages of it were presented to the players today. Uh, Asada are claiming that they have receipts linking Steve Dank to purchasing peptides that he used used at Cronulla and also claims that Dank has confirmed the substances that he used at Cronulla. Now Dank denies both of those things very strongly and Dank interestingly hasn't received a show cause notice. Now if the Cronulla players do decide to admit guilt, the NRL are saying they will support them very strongly, Pete. OK, Danny, thank you. In a shocking act of brutality, an American journalist appears to have been beheaded by Islamist militants in Syria. The horrific act, reportedly in retaliation for US airstrikes in Iraq, was filmed in a video released online. We have chosen not to show the full graphic content of the video, but must warn, viewers may find this report confronting. James Foley went missing in Syria nearly two years ago.